Uh, hey everyone, this is Nick from Suicidal Angels and you're listening to Metalomania. Keep it thrust. This is Riley from Power Trip and Metalomania kicks ass. Hi, Billy Mays here, and have I got a special offer for you. Have you been down and out and losing your faith in humanity? Well, we have the cure right here. It's called Metalomania. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you have all been waiting for.
Simon says stare directly at his cock. Perhaps the finest hour on television. And that was Dead Reckoning to open up episode 254 of Metalomania. Welcome, metalheads, metal lads, metal ladies. Scully, how are you? I am amazing. Thank you. Fuck yeah, ready to do the metal, man. <laughs> Welcome to episode 254. It's going to be a good one. We got special guest Nicholas Burst coming by tonight from Stonecutters. Mm-hmm. A great, great interview with a great, great dude and a great, great band. Another band we got to see live recently, right, which is cool. Fuck yeah. They Our brought first- it to the stage yes they did yes. our first post pandemic show we got to see lich king and cruel bomb which we had cruel bomb on the show the other night which yeah. thank you to um matter of fact thank you to brandon from cruel bomb for coming on and thank you to eric from misanthropic tournament for coming and co-hosting the show with me nice yeah good shit i appreciate that <laughs> good shit good shit yeah it was a good time and uh, the show was good that's why we wanted to drag down nicholas and get him on the show so he'll be by later oh yeah Looking forward to that, but I don't want to overlook that that was Dead Reckoning. That was the song Medi Apocalypse from As It All Burns to open up the show. Those are some badasses from Georgia, and uh, hopefully we'll get them on the show. We may be in, uh, teaming up with them. You know, our buddy Tack from Tombstone Blue oh, cool. out of Georgia. We're talking about doing maybe a special Below the Mason-Dixon Line Metal Yard, so oh, stay tuned oh, for that. Oh. So yeah, that'll be fun, though. Looking forward to that. Shout out to Tack. We love Tombstone Blue and our buddy Tack, as a matter of fact, so... Uh, We'll be teaming up and doing a Metal Yard special. Speaking of specials, we got a special we're working on soon, which is going to be our countdown of metal movies, related metal-related movies. Right. So stay tuned for that as well. Right. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Again, thanks to our guys for coming and making 253 happen. That was a good time. That was a good time. You know, we got Ghost Keeper coming on the show soon. We got um, Brick by Brick coming on the show soon. We got some other big interviews. We were supposed to talk to Kobold, a thrash metal band out of Serbia. Right. But apparently, like, dude's been arrested for protesting, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll keep you posted on that. I, so. uh, I'm so terrified for him. Yeah, apparently, crazy, like, you know, he may or may not even get out is yeah, the story. So I don't know. That just blows my mind. Crazy. We live in such a sheltered yeah. world here. We you take know, it for we, granted, we don't we? really do. And, you know, yeah, man. you guys, much love out there. So. Much love, yeah. Sending out our love to Cobalt, man. <laughs> yeah. Big, big fan of that band, by the yeah. way. Fucking that To te- everybody struggling right techno now. Techno-fascism you know, is the name of that release. Pretty good. Shit going on in the world, so. The world is nutty. So, uh, pretty crazy. But uh, that does bring me to our first topic of the night, which is opinion polls. I, I, mm, okay. Okay. Honestly, our our main topic tonight, we're going to get into here in a minute, which is Scully and I have a theory. We alluded to it last week on the show that Scully and I have a theory for why violence is on the rise. Right. There's another thing on the decline. Why everybody's so angry. Yeah, we think they're related. But we're going to get to that in a second. Honestly, it was my homework on that topic that led me down this whole opinion poll part here for just a quick detour, if you will. All right. This is the asterisk on our next story. Right. Our our setup to the next story. Okay. Because a lot of what we're going to talk about is based on these opinion polls that have done been right. done. You know, opinion polls seem to indicate that violence is on the rise. Well, that's more than opinion polls. Statistics show the violence is on the rise. But, right. but opinion polls show that like all a lot of the sex stuff we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. And I, Ooh, I guess my sex. first question for you is, uh-huh. how reliable are our pe- opinion polls? You know. Um, who's honest and who I lies? I would say seventy five percent. Yeah, right. I mean, like I'm just throwing a number out there. I have right. no idea. But. Well, I think that's as accurate as an opinion poll. Honestly, I think that, that you're onto something because I was reading some of these men. Some are of these, they? Um, are you asking somebody face to face? Are they able to like submit often. their answers? Like there are some privately, online, where it's... but very often people are being met up with face to face and asked yeah. the public to answer questions. Yeah, it's you're never going to get on it, no especially about sex. Way. You're not going to get out. Sex. Yeah, yeah, there's no way. Well, and, I, and that does is a little surprising because some of the results to the polls we're going to talk about later. Okay. You would think if people were going to lie, the results would be different. Honestly, you know, they <laughs> would lie show in the, the other direction. Right. Okay. So it is weird. <laughs> And just to foreshow some of that, apparently we're not fucking anymore. I can't believe it, but we've stopped fucking one another. That's crazy, people. That's oh, what I'm I trying see. to tell we're you. We're talking about pussy. More or less. But anyway, okay. in some of these polls, though, like, if someone asked you, like, well, well I know we're talking uh, sex-related polls, but if somebody asked you point blank, like, are you racist? Who's saying yes to that? Are you looking at the pollster on the face and saying, yes, yes, I am? Right. Oh, right. You know? Right. Or have you had genital warts or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like like, any, almost anything that you're taking a survey about. Right. I mean, really, honestly, because yeah. it's, you know, it's not like, have you had a million dollars before? Right. You know, like, right. yes, yes, I have. You know, right. like, it's not, they're not usually do good you things. you make every woman come you've ever touched? Right. Yes, of, of course, course I do. Right. Yeah, I you mean. Know, it's, 
Right. It's um, I, so that does that is a precursor to the whole thing where I do wonder how reliable they are. I mean, I won't even get into the political bullshit because we don't do politics here, but they've proven to be wrong time and time and time again. Yeah. You know, where. You know, and that's a less sensitive topic, I feel like, than some of this stuff. You know? so <laughs> right. It is odd to me. Yeah, I wonder I how much of that. I wonder how much of that. Right, so what do it. you have research there about polls, opinion polls then? Well, just I, the bigger the bigger premise as we lead oh. into that is just, you know, I, I, I wonder how. It may not even be accurate. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, people are really, we're, we're making this big leap of faith here based on these polls that people are fucking with. Well, and let's get to that, actually. According to the okay. polls, Americans are fucking a full 40% less than they were just 40%. 10 years ago. 40%? Almost half. That is an insane wow. number. Wow. And that includes globally now. We're not talking Americans only. This is global. This oh, is a okay. global phenomenon going on. Less sex of all kind, oral, vaginal, anal, even less masturbation. See, my original theory was sex is down because people are forgetting how to talk to each other. In this post-COVID world with everything being digital and texting. and Right. People are just watching porn and taking care of it right. or whatever. But apparently that's not even happening. They're not even doing that. That I, Yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss. Dude, there. I have accused this next generation of being lazy, but that is Are they is too like, lazy to fuck? Oh, my God. Is it? Well, I guess I'm assuming you might be onto something. it's the next generation. Is it everybody? No. No, it is everybody ages? though. It is all ages. All ages. Sex is down all ages. Yeah. It is not a next generation thing. It is a it is a oh. it is a human thing. It's we're not just, even an American we're thing. We're just not it's feeling a, it right now. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> there are a few indicators that I wonder right. how they play a role. One, we've all been stuck in the house together. So we're hating each other. Right probably now. at first I Or the single do, ones just don't have access. Right. Okay. Didn't we do a special early in the pandemic? You and I talked about sex toy sales were up. Yes. Sex website stuff was up, so I wonder if we just got burned off, burned out. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wonder if we spent the first year and a half of the pandemic just rubbing it out all the time, and then uh, we're like, I need a break. Hey, you know, you assholes almost broke my pussy finger. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I wonder how much of that there is. The part that really leaves me stumbling for words, obviously, <laughs> is porn is more readily available than it has ever been in our lifetime. Okay, right. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, when I was a teenager, I had to steal like you know, shitty magazines with still frame pictures and hairy bushes. You couldn't even see the vagina behind, and, <laughs> you know, and now there's like, boom, you can be 10 years old and pull that thing out of your pocket and look at fucking graphic porn, yeah. graphic. I was going to say Google pretty much anything, but not like Google, but you know what yeah, I mean? Like search right. for pretty much anything that you want to search for and it'll come up. I wonder if that has a desensitizing effect overall. I, yeah. I you know, this is a theory. It's too readily available. Right. Right. It's kind of that theory about the drugs where they, you know, I know people that have always carried the theory that if you make drugs readily available, like if you just open the store and make it where cocaine and everything's in there, over time, we'll lose our novelty about it. You know okay. what I mean? And therefore, only the junkies will kind of do it and everybody else will be like, ah, whatever, you know? Right. And I wonder, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. But if, right. you know, otherwise it's lost its appeal. It's lost its appeal to you. Hmm. You know? Yeah. I wonder how much of that there is. I don't know. You know, I would say, if anything, you know, speaking on a personal Well, level, you know what I think maybe has something to do with it. Okay. Everybody is so focused on, you know, themselves, me, 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 you know, uh, they can't be bothered to even learn what somebody else's preferences are to make them come well. well does that explain masturbation going down? Well, my, I, no, I'm not, I guess, speaking on that. I'm just meaning, like, if you're not doing it well... To oh. me, you know, we're not going to do it very right. often. I believe, you well, know I believe I mean? that's so, a... like, if, you know, collectively, everybody's just doing bad fucking, because <laughs> nobody, like, cares to, like, actually make sure the other person Everybody's is... Everybody's phoning it in. Yeah. yeah you know? you, I don't know. You might be mm -hmm. onto something, I wonder, because I do feel like if you're having good sex, you're going to want to have it pretty often. You're going to want to, right. you know what I mean? That's what I'm so... thinking. Right. You know? Hmm. But again, this is How global of all ages. How many men here that don't care if their woman comes right we know? have a buddy who famously tells a joke all the time uh how long does it take my wife to come don't know don't care i don't get that mentality very much that's that's a bit on the goofy side yeah but i wonder how much of that plays into the sex numbers being down man i want to know from you out there are you guys fucking more are you fucking less are you masturbating less i'm married and have sex all the time and i still masturbate sometimes what the fuck i, I mean, would say like i probably masturbate less you know and I, uh, I don't know if that's just because like i'm getting older like yeah i just i'm good in that department yeah <laughs> i know i'm already to go to toy like, at all times brag, i guess about that but like i don't really need to um it is weird to me it's, a, it's a weird to, thing i don't need to do that work i could just be like hey crypt yeah yeah I, <laughs> i'm like a sex toy in a lot of ways so 
Uh, well, I propose, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll get to some music here. We do have a big show for, <laughs> for everybody tonight, and I want to throw that out there. I want to get your feedback on it. And we'll, we'll go to that in a minute. But before we move on to some music, I do want to propose you and get you thinking about what can we do about it? What can we do to initiate fucking to return? Because the other side of this pillow, this, this coin, is that violence has returned, ladies and gentlemen. That is our theory. Yes. yes. Violence I, has we returned. We believe that people are And that's are not angry. a poll. That's the, You're just mad all the time. And of course you are because you're not getting laid. Right. You know, if I don't There's come a direct result for here. three or five days, you know, I get bitchy. And you don't want to be around me because I will be unreasonable about it until I come. And then it's almost like a light switch. Like, yeah, and okay, it's like, huh, like, uh, the roses you know, do exist um, again. Calm again. The pressure has been let out, you know. <laughs> There's something to that, man. Yeah. I do believe. You build up pressure and you have to release that shit. That is how that works. Well, and here's an interesting part of this statistic. Hmm. Crime has been going down since the late 70s. Crime has been seen a dramatic decrease. I know okay. that we talk about it all the time, but honestly, statistically, Especially violent crime has gone down. Good. Okay. Until the last two years. Violent oh. crime is on the rise. And strangely enough, though, overall crime is still on the on the decrease. Okay. Property crime, theft, all of that is on the decre decline still. Okay. Violent crimes has returned. People Violence are just going fucking specifically, nuts. Specifically, right. Without wanting to rob you necessarily or anything, people are just committing road rage incidents, for instance. Yeah. Way on the rise. Crazy. Yeah. Out of control, even. Shocking numbers on that. Mm -hmm. um, and again. Well, even like the airports and stuff. Like people will, will just punch an airline attendant. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like right just, in the head. What in the fuck is wrong with you? You, you would never do that out in society. I don't know what like makes you so mental. Well, there, it, it's like, weird, it, man. Well, I mean, I'm not even going to get into the Oscars thing, but you had a physical altercation at the Oscars. We had a physical, you know, we had a yeah, punch violence at the is everywhere. Oscar. Violence is everywhere. It has people walk around, us. I walk around wearing shirts that say, let's give violence a chance. Yeah, you know, give like, violence what? a chance. I've like, seen are that you, shirt. What? Yeah. Dude, we need fucking back. We, I, I'll tell you what. We're going to play some music. We're going to talk to Nicholas give and Stone Give fucking Carters, a chance. But give fucking a chance. Where's that t-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> I want everybody thinking on that a little bit. Because when we come back after this and me and Scully return, I think we need to discuss what are some options? What do we got to do to get people fucking again, man? Know, man? You know, what do we got to do to get you all slapping fucking gyro again? I think that prostitution should be made legal. For sure. I really do. Because sure. then, you know, it puts people to work bonus right and then it creates a situation where the people that don't have any game and can't fucking go find somebody can still have somebody come over and take care of their needs and do you know what needs to be done so and true. i'm sorry but society needs that well and, and if you make it illegal and you make it something that they have to sneak around to do it's not regular i'm not that i sh it's gotta be regular you gotta have right. you know std checks you have to have you know there's different things that have to be they have to be made safe you know so the women aren't put into dangerous situations and, and that alone will eliminate, you know, so much that goes uh, along with it. It needs to happen, honestly. Yeah. You know? Well, and something we didn't touch on, and I will a little bit here, and we'll talk a little bit more about later, but the whole incel thing, you know, the people that identify themselves as involuntarily celibate is yeah. this incel movement. And I've looked at this in great detail. Violent crimes, very often violent crimes, in particular school school shootings and or mall shootings and or public shootings literally nine out of 10 of those are per, per done by these incels people, people that identify as incels Who have admittedly called themselves. Right. You go to their social media and they have hateful things about women on there because they have no game and they haven't, right. you know, no woman will give them attention and stuff. I honestly think if you had an outlet for these people, you would see violence go down. You would, right. there would be a direct result in violence going down. These people need an outlet, man. Right. You know, I, I, I can't, We've spent so much of our legal system trying to put laws into place that dispel human instinct. And maybe we've done it too well. Maybe we've, maybe at this point we've regulated ourselves right out of fucking. I know that's why I was like, yeah, when I said regulation, because like you know anything that gets too involved with the government is right. always a nightmare. Yeah, but it turns into shit, but you do but... need somebody to like you know make sure things are done safely and yeah. then, you know it's whatever. done places. You know we should use Reno as an example. You know, Reno, Nevada has an example. It's very regulated. Those girls are very uh, medically tested and, you know, it's very clean. It's very, you know what I mean? You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. I can't believe we can't use that as a model for something more large scale. And I get it. All the Christians' heads are blowing up like, oh, my God, we're talking about making fucking, you know, 
you know, endorsing fucking, but yes, yes. Do you want well, fucking or violence? Because you, you, there's a direct result, I believe. Look at our history. We used to send women to the doctor for hysteria and they would rub one out for them. So I could have been a doctor. There's, I mean, literally doctor your doctor Crip. would be like, you're fucking going nuts. You need this release. We're going to do this for you. And right. then, you know. This is at just home. a medical procedure yeah, yeah. to keep you mentally. I don't know why mentally... they ever cut that out, honestly. But um... <laughs> we need that for men and for women. Yeah. So, so I tell you what. Think on that. Let us know what your what your ideas are. What can we do to bring back fucking? Is this our first break? It is. I know. We, 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 <laughs> we have more music it. coming. I promise. Uh, yeah. Dead reckoning <laughs> over the show. Don't forget. But yeah. Um, but get thinking. We want to know your ideas. What can we do to get people fucking again? It's for the it's for all of us. This is for it's the for help mankind. of all of us. Yeah, man. That's right. It's a chance. A chance to save mankind. A chance to save the world. Maybe the last chance. Well, fuck mankind. Fuck the world. Okay, let's All right, well, let's play some music. I got two jams for you, and right behind this will be our buddy Nicholas coming by from Stonecutters. But let's play these two jams. It's going to be start with some Extinction AD, who we just talked to Rick on the show for our 250th episode. Okay. Get into awesome. the archives, please. Uh, but they got a brand new video for the title track from Cultural Violence. It is out now, and we're happy to share it and play it. These cats are on my short list for nominees for current big four thrash bands the oh. current modern big four thrash bands okay. extinction ad deserves to be on your list and right behind that might be another candidate in fact uh jungle rot they got that deathy angle too but i the new jungle rot i can't wait for the last one was silly uh they've released this single which is total extinction from their upcoming album a call to arms comes out on may 13th put that down on your calendars okay because that shit is gonna that be far away honestly I know, man, right around the corner so and then right behind that, we'll bring in Nicholas and talk to him a bit and then play some music. We'll hang out. We'll have some fun. We'll do the metal. We'll come back. Me and Scully will talk some more about fucking here the, uh, uh, later in the show. Okay. So, sounds good. Don't go nowhere. All right. Much love. Much metal. What's up, guys? This is Rick Jimenez from Extinction AD, and you are watching Metalomania with The Crypt and Scully.
Violence is what we do. Barry, it's Taylor. Chris's friend from the party. I was just calling to check and see when we're gonna kill those Bolivians. Okay, fuck yeah. Later. no charge for awesomeness. <laughs> and now for something completely different. And welcome back into the studio, Metalomaniacs, man. As you can see, I'm joined by my new pal, my new friend, and a dude I'm a big fan of already. What's up, Nick? How are you, brother? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Uh, so much better now that I'm talking to you, sir. I appreciate your time. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, we're, we'll kick things right off with telling everybody out there that Everybody who watches the show and follows the show, I just, they know that I just saw you live, actually. I just saw you in Baltimore recently, man, which I want to tip my hat, if I may, to start things off with a kick-ass show, brother. Very kick-ass. Yeah, we, um, I felt like, uh, thank you, and I felt like every band was uh, brilliant. Like, it was a wonderful time, uh, a Saturday night in Baltimore in the month of March. Uh, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Had a wonderful time. You know, we've we have a history with Lich King, we have a history with Cruel Bong, we have a history with Toxic Ruin. I, I'm proudly hoping to had, add you to that right here tonight, as a matter of fact. So that's cool. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely, Chris. Absolutely, Chris. Who who are the guys that make up the rest of the band before we get too deep into this thing? Who are the, oh, who are yeah, the rest sure. of the guys? Like, yeah, let's talk about Stonecutters. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do so, that, right? Uh, um, okay, so Stonecutters is comprised of me. Hi, hey everyone at home. My name is Nick Burks. Uh, I play guitar and I uh sing for stonecutters we have kevin redford uh on bass he's absolutely brilliant and uh you know he sings a little bit too and he's just a wonderful man and then we have christopher j smith on drums and he is just a what a unique beautiful person Fuck yeah. like yeah like just so unique and so brilliant i love that guy and then we also have um a guitar player by the name of river jordan and he is absolutely brilliant, amazing songwriter, and um, just a really level-headed guy. Um, so we got River Jordan, Christopher J. Smith, Kevin Redford, Nick Burks, all in Stonecutters. And um, I couldn't ask for a better team of musicians to be playing heavy metal with. Like, oh, yeah. they're, oh. just forget about it, man. They're awesome. And and I'm I'm a huge fan of all those cats you just mentioned, and, and including that Nick guy you talked about there. So uh, yeah, he's all right. No, he's he, he pretty good cat, man. Pretty good. Yeah, cat. he's okay. 
How much fun has it been to be on the road with those guys you're on the road with, though, man? I, I got to, you know, I know some of those cats personally, and I love many oh, okay. of them. So that's got to um, be fun, brother. Yeah. Um, uh, I think my 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 brain goes to uh, guitar tunings. My mind, like, what's it, to answer the question, what's it like playing with them? My brain, because guitar nerd, uh, goes into guitar tunings. And uh, Lich King... Uh, the Thrash Titans. Uh, they play a half step down. Uh, Toxic Ruin. And this is really interesting for people at home that are into uh, notes and you know cool stuff like that. Uh, Toxic Ruin plays an E standard, uh, which was kind of shocking to me. Kind of cool. Um, right, right. And and they're and they're super tech too. Um, you know when I think of bands like Deicide, Half Step Down, Necrophagus, D Standard, kind of like oh, that thing. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, or Obituary, D Standard, or Morbid Angels, like even lower. I think maybe C, C Sharp, like Half Step lower than D. Um, so we got Lich and Lich King and Half Step Down, Toxic Ruin and Standard, and then the band that um, that I play in, Stonecutters. We play everything in um, D Standard, D as in dog, and that's kind of like a where my brain goes with like, how's the tour going? It's a weird thing where I just associate tunings. And once you get your fingers on the fretboard and start like, you know, feeling the string tension against the tuning with like the right, it's all about right hand. If you're a right-handed guitar player with palm muting, if you're a palm muter. Uh, yeah, my, my brain goes to that. So to answer the tour, how's it going? Dude, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, and everyone is so diverse but there's a lot of heart and there's a lot of passion and uh, a lot of amazing performances. So it, it's pretty cool to see that through like, to me, a wide range of metal music, but maybe to someone just attending their first metal show, because there's been a couple of those on this run. Um, they're, they're just kind of, you know, you know, gasping, like, what is this kind of thing? You know, it, it's been really cool. The, the package is enough to be like, diverse you got thrash you got tech death you got this straight up traditional death um so yeah it's absolutely brilliant the, effect yeah fuck yeah. yeah 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 we're kind of sludgy and kind of like weird because we're just <laughs> weird guys but uh yeah man it's been awesome and everybody in the whole tour package has been nothing but a champion of just being really cool like oh, wow. i love all these guys man so um, it's been wonderful wonderful Amazing musicians, but even more so amazing guys in my experience, man. I do love all those cats quite a bit, you know. Yeah, dude. Very that's always cool. tough. Like, because you can meet someone that's like Ingve Malmsteen level of like playing, and then like you, you know, they're like killing it. And then you like talk to them, and then you're like, oh man, like you're so like you're just not really we're not compatible. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. You, so. you and I can, I can be a fan of your work, but you and I can't talk. So it is nice when you have, you know, the, you can hit on both levels. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Cause there's a lot of people like I listen to, um, musically, it, um, that, that or it? maybe even like a podcast where I'm like, man, like I met the guy and he had a, a, a guy person, whatever. Like I, I met him and I think they were having an off night. Because I know we could be cool with each other. Right. Like, I know it, man. So, like, you know, it, like, we haven't had any of that on this tour. Um, had a sound guy yell at me one time so far. And <laughs> it and wasn't in Baltimore, was it? It wasn't in Baltimore, was it? No, I know Greg okay. Serio. Shout oh, out yeah, to Greg. Cool. Hey, yeah, Greg. I go back quite a bit with Greg myself. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's a gem. For the listeners at home, the sound guy for the Baltimore show that Lich King, Stonecutters, and Toxic Room played on St. Thrasher's Day. Think, I can't even say that. Me either, um, brother. <laughs> yeah, the, the sound guy's name is Greg Serio, and he's a dear friend of mine. So, hey, Greg. Um, love, but if yeah. you want to talk about, like, a, a bad experience, it was definitely um, Omaha, Nebraska. Oh. And um, one thing led to another, and the sound guy kind of snipped at me. And uh, I was like, man, I'm so sorry. I'm literally, like, not trying to make your life difficult and he came too because like i get it like i get snippy and everything and i think it was just wrong place wrong time everything right. was wrong it's all about and, the uh, moment brother yeah exactly exactly yeah. You just right off like i get it dude like sometimes i'm not thinking straight um so afterwards though the show's over and i you know i came up to him and i'm like man thank you i know you're working really hard and this is very stressful and he was <laughs> like oh yeah it's all good so like it's all peace, and that show was amazing. 
So yeah, it was just very interesting. Like, you know, dealing with personalities and stuff like that. Tour package though, everybody's diamonds, dude. Like they're all super nice people. Love oh, them. Yeah. Dude, we've actually joked. We did an entire show once on, you know, the moment, man. It's all about the moment. You, If you catch the person at the right moment, you could either be lifelong friends or lifelong enemies, man. It's all about that moment you fucking run. You know what I mean? It's all about so much of it is up to chance, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And Wild shit. I kind of just let it. I, I, dude, it's like, this is not my home. Yeah, right on. I, I'm, I'm, I am in your room and I will do whatever you want we have similar objectives brother but uh people who are just learning about you guys right now man how do they follow you guys how do they make sure they're tuned in and plugged into what you guys are doing and don't miss what you what's happening oh yeah like social media and all that stuff it's like you just look up stone cutters and there okay. we are yeah uh, it's yeah. kind of kind of at that like that point of it where you can just look up stone cutters and you'll see my face or um you'll see our logo and you can follow us. Our music is available on all streaming platforms. Um, so, or you can just like hit us up on Bandcamp. Obviously, yeah. There you go. There's hard copies, copies, man. We push. For oh yeah, hard yeah, copies. yeah. Like, yeah. You beat me to it, Chris. Um, <laughs> you know, like you, you can go to our Bandcamp and like support it that way too. But um, we're out there. We're we're live and dangerous, man. Then Lizzie okay. style. Well, and as I was told told by uh, a member of Litz King, even uh, and our hardworking cats, man, I you know that's always a good moniker to hang around your neck in these days too. So, you know, yeah, man. hardworking cats putting in the work, man. That's where it's at. And, and on that front, where are you in that? You know, I am a big fan of this one, so I'm kind of diving into your discography here as oh, of late, cool. having seen you guys. But where are you in the progression of where we come next? You know, oh man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a new LP uh, that's almost done, and we played one song off of it um, on this tour as just like a test to see if, like, you know, let's see if we get like a mosh response, or let's see if people go out and smoke a cigarette. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's been absolutely stellar with the new the new material, and uh, I think we're releasing that somewhat soon. Uh, talking to a label and all that stuff. And um, I'm kind of in the middle of those those talks and uh, kind of exciting. Yeah. And I'm looking at that. So, yeah. And, but if, if you want to check out any of our stuff, like it's on Bandcamp, Spotify, streaming services. We have a whole, almost a whole record written. And uh, we just wanted to get out there and do like a month with our friends. And we're we're very thankful that they took us under their wing. And has treated us like family, and it's been absolutely brilliant. But yeah, there's new music, and it's been pretty sick. A lot of people had banging. So fuck yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, psyched about it, brother. Psyched about it. And I'm going to tell you all out there, man. In preparation for what will be brand new Stone Cutters music, go out and get this, man. Pick it up right now. Carved in time. Yeah. I'm, we're enjoying the fuck of it around here. And I will tell you, Scully, my the beautiful Scully, my my co-host here. And, and again, I always have to. I feel I always have to apologize when. You guys are always stuck talking to my dumb ass instead of getting to talk to her beautiful self. But but she's actually a, a champion of you guys quite a bit behind the studio, behind the scenes here too, man. She's loving the fuck out of this, playing it at work and all that shit. So sick. Yeah. Mad, um, mad, mad love, brother. Going into the writing of that stuff, like for Carved in Time, man, uh, dude, it was so weird. Um, we don't write music uh, to fit any uh, trend. And, and I mean that in the most respectful, like loving way. Like I love all music if it's good. And um, we kind of just wrote something that was just uh, the, in the lack of better words uh, for fans of death, um, the voice of the soul. And we just wrote what we felt and it came out that way with no, no, like trying to write something through the lens of a, let's say a thrash metal band or like a death metal band or you know, a hardcore band yeah, and all three of those things that I listed, I absolutely love, you know, um, it, that can be kind of damning, I think, to an artist to an extent, because you aren't like every song is kind of different. And then you get labeled in like a prog kind of area and all this other stuff. And, and that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm happy to be doing it. But it has made it like somewhat of an interesting point with the band where it's like these elements of death hardcore 
thrash. Uh, I think those are the most definitive. And there's also like really pretty elements too. There's like acoustic guitars and shit. There's like a 12 string guitar in one song. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's very unique. And I think like if I was at a party and I was trying to explain that to someone like elevator pitch style, they would immediately <laughs> walk away. Like just like this is this guy's full of shit. And, and um, so far, it's worked out in our favor, and we've stuck to our guns, and we haven't changed anything about ourselves um, to satisfy anyone. Like well, we're just, it really translate lo- translates fantastic live, man. You know, I ha- oh, yeah. having having been in the room now, having been there to see, you know, the, what you guys do live, man. I it translates superiorly well there. I mean, it does. And what's fun about having seen, you know, I, I was less familiar, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm an old guy. I come kind of, kind of from thrashy, death metal roots. And uh, I was less familiar with the band. And, you know, being able to see you guys live was kind of my first engagement. And I was like, holy fuck, who are these fucking guys, man? I want to talk to that guy. And, I, you know, I'm glad that we've, we've made that happen, as a matter of fact. Yeah. But, uh, but I enjoying this the fuck you know along the way, but I think it does embrace all of those elements. But having seen it live and then listening to this, you know, the, the release is awesome. You know what I mean? I, I feel yeah. it's more it's a more intimate experience that way, if I if I can. What song yeah. should we play for everybody, brother? What song should we kick everybody in the teeth with here tonight? Okay. Um there is somewhat of a somewhat of a new digital single. It's called The Absurdist. Um, so stone cutters is the band. The song is called the absurdist. And, uh, we are very, very proud of that one. And I had a dear friend, uh, record and, uh, produce and mix it. And, um, yeah. So those of you at home, listen to the absurdist. It's our most recent single. And as soon as you do that, I expect every metalomaniac out there to be following and supporting this band, go and get you some merch, man. I picked up a hard copy. If you're following us on social media, we're about to do a brand new special stickers thing where we do new stickers on the Metalomania truck. I have a brand new stone cutters that you'll see when we do that. So keep hanging out and follow these bands, man. Nick, I'm a big fan of you, brother, man. I, for real, love you much, brother. I, ho- I hope we get to hang out and party again in person again. I'm looking forward to that day, Chris. Uh, w- like when we were in Baltimore, we went to uh, like a fish market or something and, and, uh, had some like clams and oysters and shrimp. It was awesome, man. I, I can't wait to come back. That was so fun, dude. Oh, uh, well, dude, next time you're in this region, you got to stop by Metalomania Snoring Dog Studios and we'll make, we'll steam up some crabs together or something, brother. For sure. Ooh, dude, I would love that. That would be so fun. I love oh, food. So, yes, please. Fuck yeah, man. Don't get a hotel room. We got plenty of room for you cats here, brother. So. I ain't even worried about it. Fuck yeah. Come party on the grounds with us, man. Absolutely. Hey, thank you, Nick. I appreciate you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you, Chris, and everyone listening at home. uh, Stay metal. Hey, this is Nick Burks from Stonecutters, and you're watching Metalomania with The Crypt and Scully. Keep it metal, everyone, and uh, thanks for all the support. We love you guys. Let's keep it metal.
And that's when to grow on. Well, huge thank you to Nicholas from Stonecutters for coming by tonight, man. What oh, a yeah. badass. That was awesome. What a badass and what a badass band, man. That absurdist single yeah, fucking man. pretty killer. You know, I recorded like a just a minute or whatever of each one of the bands from yeah. that night. Yeah. And it's really cool to watch, you know, Fuck on my yeah. phone or whatever. But I tried to was like, oh, we should like put a little clip in there. And he was like, I oh, love you skulls, but your video is shit. Uh, <laughs> like, right. Oh, well, you know, I well. was going to do that. <laughs> I was going to take and put a compilation together of the show that we went to because we did just go see Stonecutters. We saw right. Lich King, Stonecutters. We saw Toxic Gruen was there, Cruel Bomb. You know, we talked to Brandon the other day. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, just the sound quality it doesn't, doesn't do, him justice. do him justice. Yeah, yeah. I always feel like if you're, if you're not going to be able to – I almost am tempted to, like, play you the live clip and then go and fish out the record version of the song to play over it you know <laughs> what i mean over but, it or yeah right yeah, that's funny because I, I i feel like if you put it out with bad sound quality it does the band a disservice is all yeah yeah so. no i get that for sure so, but i oh. what a great show though killer, killer <laughs> show. good good time man and thank you again very much nicholas for hanging out with us here at metalomania your time is appreciated and so is the fact that you are now metalomania family right it is official and don't forget, we got coming up. We got Ghost Keeper coming in the next few episodes. We got Brick by Brick coming on in a couple of days, man. They're, we're going to be playing that new song from them that has Chuck Billy from Testament on it and shit. It's going to be good. Nice. It's going to be fun. Real quick before support you get the bands. into what you're getting into. Oh, well, yeah, well, support the band. Support, I, I'm going to take quick opportunities since yeah. you said that uh -huh. the first day. Like, I knew where you were going. Follow, well, I wasn't oh, going oh, there. Oh, okay, but okay. Like, follow, and subscribe, All right. please. Um, to our bands. show, too. Click the likes, <laughs> click the things. It's all free to do. And then, of course, if you can, buy some merch. Fuck yeah. Um, that's the way cool to support merch. the fans. I would like their opinion on your new decision uh, today yeah. to cut your hair the way that you did. I was going to bring that up, hair, actually, too. This is called Devil Horns. Do you not like my Devil Horns? I do not. He sent me a picture. He's like, do you like? I was like, I love you, but no. What the I don't fuck? Like that at all. What do you guys think, man? Back me up. So, well, let's, be, so. let's start from Y'all. the top. Okay. I only agreed to do a radio show six years ago now so that I could do stupid shit with my facial hair. We, I made that clear right from the start. <sighs> if I can do stu stupid shit Yeah, but my when face you said radio show and I agreed <laughs> to that, I thought it was just audio only. <laughs> right. Well, it's so. better than the dude from the metal show. That guy that put the flames in his hair and all that shit. I can't remember his name right now, but the guy that always put the flames in his beard. This is better than that. I'm Come on. not familiar with Where that. Where are you, but... metalheads? No, so do I, I love you, babe, but it doesn't grow. I don't even like that. It, I'm not even gonna touch it. It grows me out a little. Come honestly. touch it. Come touch it. Huh? Do, no, do you really want to? Do you really want to taste it? It's scraggly, like it was scraggly when there was a one piece goatee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, somebody back me up. I need some of you guys out there to back me up. Dig me on my on my shit. So oh, good stuff. So bad. You know, you talked about buying merch a second ago. I love your creeping uh, flesh shirt, by the way. Thank you. We talked to them on the show recently, and I do love that band, and I love that release. They're so fucking great. At the bottom, it says, and then the bombs came. Yeah, that's the name of the new release, and it's so good. So go get it. So good. And if you go to the archives, you can see our conversation with them from recently. And, you know, uh, Bluesy Speedball, interestingly enough, I not only have this shirt that I love of theirs, and they're a band that we have also talked to and interviewed, and what a cool interview with them, by the way. <laughs> Definitely suggest you take that out if you missed it. But uh, I wanted to bring them up tonight because we are now it's spring. We're officially about to yes. start migrating out to the new studio. And we have started, Belushi Speedball started a trend here with Metalomania oh, yeah. that I would now like to reinvigorate if I if I Yeah, may. yeah. Oh, send us your pics. Yeah, we want pictures of your pussy is what I'm getting at. Yes, please. Pictures of your pussy. Please send them to Metalomania. <laughs> and of course, we mean pictures of your cats. Your uh, cat. Your cats. Metalomania. Yeah. Metalomaniacs love cats. Yes, they do. I, so. It's a wild, cool thing to me that we've definitely <laughs> noticed as a major trend, but metalheads love their fucking cats, yeah. man. And, and like, the more like death you know loving burly <laughs> motherfuckers the they are yeah. like right or like the you know the, the, got the ones with corpse like, paint with a fucking kitten going like yeah like kitty, got the little lit yeah. litter of kittens coming out you know like it is yeah cool, man. well and let's give credit where credit is due belushi speedball started a trend here they have okay. started what will hopefully be an even bigger trend i'd like to see it grow they sent us not only when did they send us a copy of their CD and this awesome, amazing T-shirt, but they sent us a picture of Stella. Stella is their cat. And uh, maybe I'll share a picture here while we're talking about Stella. But Stella is their cat. And now we have a picture of Stella up in the new studio. 
in what will be the Metalomania Metalhead Pussy Wall. And we officially hey. want pictures of your cats. Everybody, you know, put your name on it if you can, and let's start loading up. I want to eventually have a big wall full of just everybody's pictures of their pussies. Yep. Well, you know, cool. it's 2022. You can just like email us or you yeah, know, tag right. you yeah, in a Facebook right. thing. Yeah, or that's something. true. You we can, can print them. You know that's what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can print them. Email you it don't to us. You need people to like send you a picture in the mail. I mean, yeah. it was cool that they did that for sure. Right. But you right. don't need, yeah. you know, like people right. you maybe can make get it, it to easy us for easier, people. Though. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need a stamp these days. That's true. Um, well, show them the email. Yeah. So flash them the email so they know where to send your pictures of your pussy. You can send them to us on social media as well, but whatever's yeah. easy. Yeah. But we do. I do really want to see that girl. I'd like to see that whole wall just right. blow up with pictures of cats. Yeah, I guess cool. I, you need to remind me. I need to print out some pictures of Meow, Mr. Meowgy and Danielson yeah. to make sure that our, you know, our own pussy is represented on yeah, the wall. Yeah, we got to put our own pussy on the wall. Yeah, I mean, the Danielson, fuck? Mr. Meowgy, and. Anyway, uh, go, go get your merch. Go get your merch. I like it. I like your creep flesh shirt. Thanks. Good stuff. Uh, really quickly, let's give some shout outs to some shows that have given us love. We've picked up 500 subscribers here very recently. I nice. appreciate you guys. Thank you guys. I don't believe that to be on accident. Uh, shout out to Thrills of Metal, big guys who are big, hugely. So they just went past 10,000 subscribers, Ooh, by the way. Nice. Congrats, guys. Um, they've always given us love, always been supportive. I'm sure that they have played a role in that. Um, Metal Devastation Radio has played a role in that. Midwest Promotions with Natalie has played a role in that. You know, am I leaving out Metal Tavern Radio with DJ Anubis and them? Shit, Misanthropic Torment, uh, tor uh, Torment with Eric and them. So, for real, much love. Thank you to everybody who's helping us to make that happen. But uh, back to what we were talking about earlier, though. We are here to promote metal. That's our primary function right. as a show. Right. But as a an aid to society, if you will. Oh. Let's promote fucking. We need to promote yes. fucking. Yes. Let's get back. How I'm do we get back to fucking? That. Yeah. Um, let's try fucking. I guess first let's get a let's bunch of those t-shirts made. Yeah, let's try. I do. Th I like that. Instead of let's try violence. We're going to get or, metal or, What is it? Get violence to try? Give fucking a try. Give fucking a try. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. We need to get back to that. I do believe that you will literally, if we can somehow get people back to fucking, you will literally see the violence numbers go down. Yeah. I think it's interesting that. On the back, maybe we can do like stick figures, <laughs> you know, like the people fucking equals like with a happy face or oh, something you know right. what i mean like fucking yeah. equals happiness I like, like people will understand that well what can we do to promote fucking you know i think you had a great idea earlier legalizing prostitution is i it's, it's silly to me right. that we haven't I, I it's just ridiculous morality bullshit from religious angles is why that's not been done and that is crazy to me that is a public service flat out public service yeah absolutely yeah, i mean it just is you need these people need to release we need to do well i I suggest this too. You know, you okay. have yoga classes. Yeah. What if you had like button rubbing classes, man? You and I could even host that. How could that's got to be legal, right? If oh, you like to it train people. Yeah. You mean, or to like, like if I had a class it. where you and me like sat down and I was like, I'm going to use Skelly as my example today and show you guys how to make well, her. I'm sure like a crazy there's person. stuff like that out there, honestly. Well, yeah, there are, I yeah. want to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I guarantee there's stuff out there like you, that. That's yeah. probably legal, right? That yeah, does that curb the legal? Like that's not if you're, you're not even fucking to anybody else. So what do you? Why would that not be legal? I don't know. If you go have a room where people are fucking, like, if you go and have couples show up and you're teaching couples how to play with each other's genitals in a room at the fucking community center, is that well? Legal? You can't do it at the community center because they're well, not going to let you do that behavior. Right, right. You'd have to do that like a private home, and in house. which case, like you know, right, pretty hard to gonna... stop you, I guess, at that yeah. point. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, what are I'm you asking if you can like put up a storefront and like yeah, ask right. people to come? Like, yeah. no, again, can you, you probably... do that legally? Um, Could you do like this is the come store? You know, probably everybody coming not here will, will because help you, come. you also there's probably like a decency clause as far as oh, like state license right, or permit. Go, right. You know what I mean? Like to be able to get like It'll an actual business. license, mm. you know, I'm very I'm going to look into that because mm. I like that. I, you, you come in and come or something, you know, <laughs> well, you can definitely like name the your come, business come something store. that sounds directly like. You know, something fucked up. I mean, fuck right. that. We saw a car the other day. It was like a car mobile washing service. They'll come to your house and detail your car. And literally, WAP. Yeah. You know, and even it has like the bitch, like the, you know, the silhouettes of like, you know, the sluts, yeah. you know, on the pussy. side. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. They're totally oh, playing okay. up on the wet ass pussy <laughs> thing for that whole right, right out there. I was shocked by that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Huh. So you can name your business whatever the hell you want, you know. And can you do anything you want with your business? You can. 
There's um, a plumbing company that we work with sometimes called uh, Drain Snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, you know, dude. The, the Drain Snake. <clears throat> I like it. That might be my porn so, name. And there's lots so. of them, you know, out there that have named their companies. Yeah, you know, next week when we come back to do the show next week, by the time I'm going to look into that, I'm going to see what are their what kind of classes exist. Legally, there probably are some. You know, I think I've seen well, like state HBO's by state. I'm sure it's different too. You know, you hmm. want to go to a pretty liberal state, and you probably do something like that. Hmm. You go to, you know, one of the more conservative ones. There's probably harder. Yeah, right. I bet in Georgia it's different than California. Yeah, yeah. probably right. All right. Although well. California now, are you claiming that you could do something? No, California is the most I know, regulated. The, what's more regulated state than California? Than, yeah, they regulate everything except fucking. I think though. So, <laughs> well, it's um, not legal for prostitution there. No, well, it's not legal anywhere except Reno. Yeah, there's literally like one city in the entire fucking country. So, and that's just crazy to me. We'll revisit that on a future episode, but I, I just think that's bananas, especially in the Who face of the rising fight for that violence. city. You know what yeah, I mean? Right? And like, how where did the fuck? Like, how? Yeah, I mean, I mean like Maybe the guy was like, "All right, that. but just you. Like, right. seriously, man. If anybody right. else asks, I'm cutting no. your shit off." And then if that guy had the power to be like, "Y'all, seriously, don't fucking ask. Yeah, don't even ask. Serious." Yeah. I'd like somebody give me some background information. <laughs> How did Reno get that through? Know. Because they definitely know. some other cities need to pick up from that ball and run with it. I'm telling you that. I mean, like the tax money they're getting from the weed sales these yeah, days. Like right. can you imagine the tax money you get from pussy sales? Right. right. And uh, now in Nevada you got legal weed and pussy. Right, man. I'm right. They gotta figure I'll pay it out. tax. Just don't arrest me I'd for it. Don't to harass know me about it. Don't what you know. their violent crime rates are. Right. You know, I'd be curious to know that. What's what's Reno well, facing as far as they're probably it is a city and it is, you know. Yeah, but they probably have a lot of tourists like their tourism numbers probably so outweighs their local population. Lends into heavily into their crime numbers, you think? Well, it probably distorts it in a way that like if you were just going by like if every town had a, you know, a Rockwell. prostitution business. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I think overall, yeah, the violence numbers would be down. Hmm. But I think people are still going there from other one cities. In that city is you know, drawing yeah. everybody to it. Yeah, so it might skew the numbers. I yeah, get that. <laughs> plausible, plausible input. All right. Well, I'm curious to know and tell us if you have ideas that will promote fucking. We got so far. We got T-shirts. We got yoga classes to rub that button, and we got making prostitution legal. So what else you got? Let's hear it. I think just open communication about yeah. it and stuff. Stop shaming people for their weirdness and stuff. You know, right. acting like you're always a victim from something. If people are you know, in first some off, weird you know, shit, make sure you have consent from stuff. But yeah, right. you know, just by somebody asking you, like, if you're interested in something or doing, you know, like that is not, con you know, necessarily abuse. You know, right. depend, you know, situated. Oh, I've read recently that asking someone on a date can be seen as a hostile act. How are you going to fuck? If you can't you ask can somebody get out. out on the date, yeah, like right. what the, I'm, I'm talking about tea, you know, let's go have some coffee. What the fuck? How's that an assault on you? So, you know, just be open to communicate, but you know, communicate crazy, you know, politely. Talk about fucking, <laughs> yeah, right? Talk about fucking, and you can do more fucking. All right, well, we'll get more into that, and we do want to know your input and if you have ideas on promoting fucking. There, that's our message for the week promote metal, promote fucking, promote metal, promote fucking. It's good for all of us. Hmm. It'll bring violence down again. And the fact that violent specifically crimes are up that I, I can't help but feel like there's a connection there. But anyway, yeah, definitely. I do want to take a, one last opportunity before we get out of here. We do have two more songs coming up here for you before we okay, go. Right. So don't go left yet. But uh, I want to remind everybody we're reaching out to you for your stories. Take your phone, put it at your face. You'd love to do it anyway for your TikTok <laughs> videos and record yourself telling us three to six minute stories. On some of the following topics. And if they're funny, and when these episodes come up, we'll play them. So I really oh. want your participation. I want stories from you guys. Okay. On like things like bad sex, bad sex stories. If you have really fucked up bad sex stories, I got a few. I got a few. You know, I'll, I'll, all before my time. Oh, no. Yeah, they're good stories now. But... You know, I've been with her 23 <laughs> years now, but I got some from back in the day, you know, some crazy, wacky stories that I'll share with you guys, man. Stories about tripping. I really want to have an episode where we just tell nothing but crazy acid stories with our Meadowhead friends, man. Okay. I know you have crazy ones, and I want to hear them. And this is the show for that. You're not going to hear those. And shows, I do think they should those... be pre-recorded and edited. So, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so I can, you know, we'll edit them down and make them, you know, we'll get them ready for air. But but I got a story about going to the castle and this place for a concert. I'm sure my you balls do. off. I'm really okay. looking forward to telling them to do that story that, that episode. Uh Story, quitting job stories. If you have a great quitting your job story, we'd love to hear it. 
Film it. Send it to us. I have a couple there. I have a combo acid and quitting job store. Oh, lovely. So there you go. Look this idea that. might be killed before we get it off the uh, um, Mosh pit stories. If you have crazy stories from the mosh pit, I remember specifically our buddy, who I won't say his name here, but we I went to a show once, and as I was walking in, there's a crowd gathered by the fence, and there's some naked dude on the fucking fence with his dick out, and he's like... I can't fucking pee. I can't fucking pee. And they're all going, you can do it. You can do it. Cheering for him. And dude finally starts pissing all over the place. That place cheered for this dude pissing like it was a metal band. And as I got closer, it was a buddy of ours. Yeah, we, we know that guy. Uh, he's a friend of ours. I've known him 30 years. Uh, so anyway, so but funny. if you have crazy fucked up mosh pit stories or concert stories, we of course want those. Please send them. Um, I got some about, I actually sold pot and cocaine back in the 80s. To a prominent member of the Big Four, the original Big nice. Four. That's right. Okay. So yeah, you can't tell that name. I, yeah, I don't think I, I won't tell any more details than that. <laughs> that. That was what you get for that story. But uh, pretty cool. Um, road raid incidents. We talked earlier that those are up. Oh my god. If you have some, if you have some stories or interactions, you know, I had a funny interaction that ended with me and the dude laughing at each. It started with us wanting to kill each other, and it ended up with these, us laughing huh. at each other. So I'll tell that story. I got a pretty good one there, and I got yeah. photos to go with it. Yeah, she does. So yeah, you that is the key, guys. I will have to. I have to tell you that if take pictures. Nothing will get reaction from anybody faster than any. You don't even have to take the picture. You just got to make it look like you're taking their picture, yeah, yeah. and they will fucking lose their shit. We had somebody move out of a parking spot. Wow, we'll get to that. Story. Nobody but wants to be had their. We moved taken. somebody out of a parking spot. Somebody was parked in two spots, and they were just sitting there being a dick. And we were there was no other parking spots, and we were like, "Motherfucker, are you gonna move?" But as soon as she pulled out her phone, fucking brake light or reverse lights kicked on. My man moved right away. So yeah. there is something to that. Um, Nobody wants so, yeah. to be shamed on social media. Share us your road rage stories. Um, and uh, what else you got? See. Oh, I did want to real quickly say a rest in peace. For, I didn't mention it last week. I, I failed to mention that Taylor Hawkins from Foo Fighters unexpectedly passed oh, away no. last week. That is crazy. This movie just came out, the Studio 666. I you know I didn't even know he was having health issues if he was or whatever, but rest in peace, brother. That sucks. Yeah, man. All right. Well, that does bring us to the end, I guess. Do you have anything to add, my dear? Nope. I love your your shirt. I love this shirt. I love my cerebral desecration. Go pick up merch. Yeah, get some merch. Help support the scene, guys. Um, yeah. You know, go out to a band. I mean, go out to a show. Yeah, you know, a, got, support a local venue, a local bartender, tons and of shows we're gonna hopefully go to. a couple bands. I'm, I'm very excited about some shows coming up. But we'll talk about that to you some next week. But keep hanging out. We got Ghost Keeper coming in. We got Brick by Brick coming in. And we're going to close with these two jams for you. First up is Decapitated. Talk about... You know, we've all had a couple of fucking crazy years, but Decapitated has had a little bit of a run. We're not going to get into that, but Cancer Culture is finally here. I uh, with The title track from it, we're going to play for you right now. The album is actually not out until May 27th, but this will be the eighth full-length release from these Polish badasses. Very much looking forward to sharing the song with you right now, the title track from Cancer Culture. And then we're going to close the show with some Worm Rot. Worm Rot behind closed doors from the new album, Hiss. That actually is set to come out in wow. July. Nice. July 8th, and uh, here's a little peek for you for some grindcore from Singapore. Badassery abounds. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. When these songs are over, not until, but when they are, please do shut out the lights and lock the door, and we'll see you next time on Metal of Mania. Yes, sir. Much love. Much metal. Scully roll. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Ain't us, ain't us kids, ain't us, ain't us, ain't us. That's right, go tell your friends. Or don't, either way, it's your choice. Hey.
$20,000. The wages of sin are rising. Finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Yeah. Okay. Yo! What the f You want penis enlargement pills? <laughs> hey, he's knocking on the back door. What should I do? He's knocking on the back door. Should I let him in? I'm a scared! Hey, back to our front door as long as I get in the kitchen, baby. This is Sean Killing from Violence, and you're listening to Metalomania with the Crip. Metal up your ass, brothers and sisters. This is Mike Dreyer from Lich King and Condition Critical, and you are listening to Metalomania. Hey, this is Lenny from Dustbolt, and you're listening to Metalomania with the Crip. Hey, this is Carl from Now, and you're listening to Metalomania. What's up, everybody? Billy Milano here from Method of Destruction MOD as we get ready to tour. I want you to know that you're listening to Metalomania with Chris and Billy fucking Milano. Tell your mom I said hi. <laughs> 